Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hello to you all and a very warm welcome to the show. Now I've got some news I'd like to share with you. On Thursday the 25th of August we are moving to a brand new channel. We'll be broadcasting on Sky Channel 186. Our broadcast times will remain the same. Please tell your family and friends Thursday the 25th of August Sky Channel 186. Now coming up on the show this week we'll be meeting Colin Farrell, who is the founder of Stamp Out Suicide. We'll be catching up with Wayne Devlin, who has just returned from the Palace of Westminster, where he received the British Citizen Award. But first, the London Irish Amateur Rugby Football Club, who are based in Sunbury, West London, recently held an Irish Festival and Music Day. It was a wonderful event, and we went along to catch the atmosphere. Hi Martin, uh, it's great to have you down here at London Irish today, at Hayswood, the home of London Irish. Uh, today is our annual uh, Beer, Music and Family Day. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, a lot of kids and families. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our members to get together, enjoy the sunshine outside of the normal rugby calendar. We're 
here now, I think approximately about six years. We used to be over at the Avenue, it's probably where a lot of people remember us from. Uh, 63 acre site, seven pitches, 3G, no, it's incredible. We're very much a family, I mean, as a club, I think we've got near, near on a thousand members um, and you know we've got kids from uh, four years of age I suppose up to 65 70 years of age now I believe we're going to have the uh, London Rose of today joining us later on as well yeah we're delighted to welcome Hayley Reynolds here you know it's very important for us I mean we're, we're an Anglo-Irish club um, but we like to maintain what we call Irish edge um, so you know we've got Ronan McManus behind us on the stage and uh, we'll have Hayley Reynolds she'll be down here in a couple of minutes Hayley, many congratulations on becoming London Rose of Tralee for 2022. Thank you so much. Had a great evening celebrating at the Crown Man in Crookwood on the 4th of June. 12 other contestants and myself, um, massive crowd. Everyone had great support, so it was a really nice evening. I was overwhelmed for the first week, just like, is this even happening? Is it real? And now I cannot wait to go out there and meet everybody. Now I've been told on, on good advice that you're bringing a whole coach load of people from London. <laughs> I am, my dad is, that's what I was just saying, he thinks it's my wedding. <laughs> Everyone is coming out for it so it's going to be really, really, really good fun for them and for me. Um, loads of people from my Gaelic club and all my family friends and my friends from home so big crowd. <laughs> my Irish heritage is all over the place so my dad's from Roscommon, a place called Strokestown. My mum was born in Crookwood, which some people say is like an extra county of Ireland. <laughs> um, and her parents are from Kilkenny and Leitrim. So I'm dotted all over the place, really. I'm always happy to give them a picture and a, and a little signed autograph. I haven't done an autograph yet. Maybe I need to practice that. <laughs> Couple of friends of mine, Ben Gunnery and Dave Kenny, we're going to be doing some music kicking off the day. It's not very Irish weather, but hopefully, hopefully the music will be. So it's going to be, going to be a great day of music with Lorraine O'Reilly after us, and then uh, Barry Owen. So it's going, to be, it's going to be a great day. Well, Liam Kaplan's just told me that you're Mr. London Irish because you've been here so long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it feels like I've been yeah but over nearly 40 years now. I suppose I've been I've been involved with London Irish. So uh, my mum. Uh, uh, my mum was very much involved with the, with organising the, the mini rugby, and uh, all my brothers played as well. So uh, you know, I've been been down London Irish since I was a kid. I played rugby down here when I was six, through till I was about eighteen, and played music for them ever since. We've got a great association down here, and we always love coming down. It's always like feels like getting back to the the old family, you know. And of course, talking about brothers, there you've got a very famous brother. Yeah, the oldest one, he didn't play rugby for us, he was too famous by then, but um, Elvis Costello is Declan McManus. Uh, so yeah, so he's, uh, he's, a, he's from a dad's first marriage, he's a bit, a bit older than us. So he's sort of been famous my whole life, you know. Uh, but he's, he's, he was, he's very big shoes to fill, but, uh, and then my dad was a singer as well, so they taught us how to, how to make music a living. And, to, uh, and you know, we're really, it's, it's really our family business, really. All the brothers all play music. It started 16 years ago. I have two boys. Um, I've always loved rugby. My bo brothers are heavily um, support, huge supporters of Leinster, so always loved rugby. I introduced the boys here when they were uh, four and five years of age. I used to have to bribe one of, them, one of them with picnics at the start, but yeah, they both fell in love with rugby. So yeah, I stayed with uh, their age group and then I took over management of one of my eldest son's age group for about eight years. Um, till he graduated for, to university and then five years ago I took on a position of honorary secretary so I was the first female honorary secretary in the club in 125 years so it was quite, a, quite an honour. We love seeing the kids, everything from three up to our, our seniors and even our vets. We have a vet that still plays at like 65 years of age which is amazing and we, we're a, an inclusive club. We invite girls, boys, men, women to come and play rugby. It's all about the Irish and the English community here. Kevin, tell me a little bit about the teams that you've got here at London Irish Amateur Rugby Football Club. Well, where do we start, Martin? It's, um, we start them off at under fives, and they go all the way through to what we say sometimes over 65s, and everything in between. So we run them from uh, some under fives to 12s, in in youth rugby, sorry, mini rugby, 
youth then goes from from 12s to 17s. Then we've got Colts, um, and in, in in the youth and mini, we'd have two, if not three, teams per age group. So it's uh, I haven't looked at the numbers in terms of how many, but it's a lot. One of the issues that we've had as a result of COVID is actually uh, certainly male participation in rugby. Our, our ladies section is, is growing really, really quickly and being very, very successful. But certainly in the men's side of things, we've seen a fall off in, in sort of uh, men's participation in rugby. So that's the big focus for us is to try and entice fellas back playing rugby again and hopefully here down at London Irish. Sponsorship is vitally important. Every amateur sports club in the country survives by the people who run it, the volunteers. And to support the volunteers, we need sponsorship. Every amateur club needs sponsorship. We're blessed with a fantastic facility here at London Irish, but the number of teams that Kevin mentioned is run by volunteer parents, volunteer coaches, volunteer administrators, and to support them, we desperately need sponsorship. If people wanted to sponsor or contact you and have a chat with you about it, how can they do that? They can contact me. My details are on the London Irish Amateur website. Uh, they can touch me by email, or they can contact uh, Liam Capeless, uh, who's in charge of our social media output. We're on every social media platform. I'm a people person, so I just go out and talk to people, talk to potential sponsors. And in fact, I recruited one today at this event. So a, a guy who plays for our first um, team, the Wild Geese, um, Henry Fuller, he's uh, agreed to sponsor us today. Uh, hopefully, you'll talk to Henry later on. He'll tell you all about what he does. So I've been an academy rugby player here since I was 16, 17 years old and now I've uh, played for the London Irish Wild Geese, which is the men's um, amateurs team. I've been playing for the last two seasons um, and we've got a season about to start the season now. So big involvement uh, here every weekend and absolutely love the club. I've just brought out my own company as well and we, we provide the club with our shirts, which is what I'm wearing now. We're going to sponsor the geese and um, support them throughout the year. Um, so we'll hopefully be on the shirts, but we'll, we'll support them financially. And uh, yeah, we'll be on their kit, so it's a fantastic thing for us and, 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 and great for me to be playing uh, for the geese and also be supporting my business. So yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, we design and make our own like eccentric shirts, perfect for festivals, for holidays. Yeah, we've, we've started going down the route of doing customised shirts, so we've now just formed a partnership with Barmy Army, um, as well as London Irish, and, and, and they, they come to us asking for personalised shirts, like, like what I'm wearing. You can buy an order off our website, so it's www.shishirts.co.uk. We've also got an Instagram, shishirts underscore UK. I'm born and bred in Cove, County Cork, so I moved over here 17 years ago and I've got my three kids over here with me. Uh, one of them plays here with London Irish Wild Geese, as in the semi-pro team, and the other two boys are playing at um, minis and youth level, at under, under nines and under twelves. So uh, it's great to be down here with all three of my boys, it's very good. Every year it's the beer festival, beer music festival seems to grow bigger and bigger. So we try and improve it every year as well where we can. Uh, but that connection with the community is really, really vital for us. We, had, we bring a lot of players obviously from the community and I think our relationship has got a lot better over the years with them as well. Wherever I go, I always bump into people that I know from London Irish, there's always associations, always people that you meet. And uh, we're all still in each other's lives. People I played with when I was seven years old, I'm still in touch with them. So it's just one big family and always has been. And it seems to be, just keeps on, keeps on producing more and more friends, uh, you know, as the years go on, it's getting stronger and stronger. In September, um, we'll welcome uh, new players and welcome back our existing players and members. Uh, in uh, October, we have our fireworks. We have our Christmas ball uh, in, on November 26th at the uh, Clayton in Chiswick, which will be fantastic. And we really look forward to that. We have a past players lunch in January, uh, Six Nations, our Leprechaun lunch in April, um, and then we have our honours tie in May. It's a pretty full calendar, Martin. Just go to the website, www.liarfc.co.uk uh, forward slash information, and you'll find it all there. Do you remember when we used to say Well done to everybody at London Irish Amateur Rugby Football Club. It was a wonderful day and it was great to see so many families involved. Now we hope you've enjoyed it at home. 
We're going to take a little break and we'll see you very soon. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now, Stamp Out Suicide is a wonderful organisation which was first founded by Colin Farrell some years ago. Colm has worked tirelessly behind the scenes to raise finance to keep this wonderful service going for so many people who need it. Now Colm is on another fundraising mission and we went along to meet him at Hunt's Motorcycles in Burnage, Manchester. Last Christmas I seen one of these monkey bikes and I, I just said, God, it'd be a great idea if maybe would it be possible to ride one from John O'Groats to Lens End? And um, I said, I'd contact Honda. So I sent them an email and asked them any chance of giving me a monkey bike for a loan of to do this ride. And I even cheekily put in brackets, preferably a yellow one. <laughs> but anyway, Honda came back to me and they said, I'd be more than happy to um, give me a, mon a monkey bike for doing the ride. So there you go. Stamp Out Suicide was established in June of 2015. And ever since then, we have set up a service where we provide counselling to people right across the UK, and we've been doing that ever since. Even the UK and Ireland, say for example, you'd have over 10,000 deaths by suicide every year. And, you know, I mean, like, people, they just get so depressed and they don't know where to turn to. To be honest, there is loads of help out there. And it's like through people like yourselves that are giving us the exposure that we can help more people. Your helpline is getting bigger and larger all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And we're very lucky in the fact that we have counsellors based in different parts of the UK. So when, when somebody does ring our helpline, 
we can have a chat with them and then we can redirect them to one of our counsellors who will give them a weekly counselling session for 45 minutes a week for up to 18 weeks. The whole idea started off in Ireland back in 2011 when I'd done a, a fundraiser um, for um, a Pieta House in Ireland and I was doing that and people in the UK were contacting me and asking me would I come over to the UK and walk the, all the counties of the UK like I did in Ireland and we did, we came over and actually would you believe it, it was nine years ago today we started the UK walk and we spent nine months walking through every county and then the whole idea was born about Stamp on Suicide and um, one of our trustees then he, he helped us um, set it up. I'm going to pick up the Handle Monkey bike in Aberdeen and it's 300 miles up to Janet Groth, so I have to ride it up there first before I can even start the event. And then over the next nine days, I'm going to ride down through Scotland and England and um, down into London and across into uh, Bournemouth and right over until I get down to um, Lens End. And I will be hoping, the, the plan is, I've set up a, a YouTube page and hopefully if people um, click, click onto it and subscribe, it's free, we'll be able to go live each day as we're travelling and people have a bit of a bit of fun looking at the scenery and listening to me talking some rubbish about the, the carry on and so we'll mount the little camera on here and we'll have it for the for the event. Go on to YouTube, hit the subscribe button um, because if we get a thousand subscribers and I said it's free, we'll be able to go live each day for the event and it'll be as I said a bit of bit of entertainment as well. I've been very lucky in, in, in people that I know like um, do fundraisers for us and for example on your own radio station I mean like there one night a guy rang in an anonymous and he donated a thousand pounds which at the time was massive money for us because we didn't even have we didn't even have our um, registration at that stage you know and it's hard to get funds when you're not fully registered but we are now and um, then another guy um, Sean Gradwell he done a skydive he also covered that on TV and he raised money for us there's a couple of lads in Liverpool that uh, own race horses and each year they do a fundraiser night for Stamp on Suicide in Liverpool and all these little things come together, just keep the whole thing going because we don't get any government finance at all. If we don't keep fundraising, the charity doesn't survive and that means then we cannot provide the service that we provide. Um, so we just have to keep getting money in, day in, day out. And look, at since the pandemic, I suppose, you know, there's been a lot, of, a lot of pressure on people and now with this recession coming, I know it's hard, but any donation at all will, will help the charity. What would you like to say to somebody sitting at home tonight that may be not feeling too well, they may be feeling down, depressed? What would you like to say to them? I would say to that person, if they're watching uh, this programme, to pick up the phone and contact us or send us an email. Um, just go, get on to SOS and talk to us because, you know what, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That, word, that sentence is so true, there is light at the end of the tunnel and there's always hope. And just talk to us because you know we, we can help you through the, 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 the tough tough time you're going through. I'm going to ask this fella here to subscribe for us. How are you doing? How's things? Hit the subscribe button now. Yeah. Subscribe yeah. there. Yeah. 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 You're in. Yeah. And if you don't mind, then would you, would you hit the bell as well because that. Oh means, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah notification. Yeah, yes. Yes. Course, and yeah. you know. Yeah. You get notifications when we're on the road. Yeah. Thanks, brilliant, Steve. I'll share that for you. Yeah. Brilliant. Ah, uh, so brilliant, brilliant. Good, yeah. That's brilliant. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Hey, it's awesome meeting you here. Thanks, everyone out there. Say, say thank you, everyone. <laughs> hey, brilliant. <laughs> We hope that Colm does really well with his fundraising for Stamp Out Suicide. And if you get a chance, try and follow Colm on YouTube and you'll be able to see how he's going on each day. Now we're off to meet Wayne Devlin. And of course Wayne is a great singer and a wonderful performer. But Wayne puts his heart and soul into fundraising for some great causes. And he's raised a lot of money down the years. Well, recently Wayne's work has been recognised because he has just returned from the Palace of Westminster where he received the British Citizen Award. My head keeps spinning, I go to sleep, I keep thank you grinning, if this is just the beginning, my life is going to be beautiful. Wayne, I know that the 7th of July was a very special day for you. It was. That was the day when I was uh, invited along to the Palace of Westminster to receive the British Citizen Award uh, for Services to the Arts. Now, what was it like for you going along to the Palace of Westminster? What a wonderful occasion. It was fantastic. It was a once-in-a-lifetime uh, day. Me and my wife, Val, had a great day. We went along to a ceremony where we got, um, I was presented with a medal. Uh, we had an open to bus tour. Um, they call it a lap of honour and then we came back for a certificate um, presentation. So it was a wonderful day. You must feel very proud and honoured to have received this award. 
I do. It's, uh, it's very humbling, especially when you hear the other stories of the other people receiving awards. Um, I was very proud to be amongst them and very proud to have the medal. I've actually been invited back to sing for them, so I'm going back again. Um, so Val and I will be putting our posh gear on again and um, I'll be singing for them next year. Tell me quick Oh, I love a kick Tell me quick Well, I sing um, Rat Pack and Jazz Swing and all the great American songbook songs. Um, so I've sort of I've tried to keep that music going and promote that, but use it for good causes. So um, me and Val have staged Crooning to Christmas, Swing into Spring, uh, events like that. I've sang at major balls, uh, charity balls in Manchester, Denise Welsh's um, Christmas fundraiser, Kim Marsh's Archie's Footprint Ball, things like Cheshire Housewives, all the big grand events. Um, and I sing the American songbook, Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Matt Monroe, uh, and raise as much money as I can in the process. I found out Tony Bennett had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and his wife Susan said that it's a 24 hour day condition and that music really helps him. So I decided to combine the 24 hours with the music and I, I, in this actual place, I stood and sang for 24 hours uh, and raised 9,000 for the Alzheimer's Society in Tony Bennett's honor. Like a sailor said, quote, hey, love a hole in the boat. My head keeps spinning. I go to sleep, I keep grinning. If this is just the beginning, my life is gonna be beautiful. She and I know during lockdown and COVID, you made a special effort to entertain people. Yes, people wrote in um, sent requests for songs for loved ones who were isolating and people were just feeling down and lonely and um, so I sent them a little message, video message and sang a song for them. So this is for Dermot. It's called Grace. As we gathered in the chapel here in old Kilmainham jail I, I did a handful of them and I also wrote for the Messenger newspaper, had, had a weekly column there and uh, sent out messages of support and just trying to bring the community together during isolation online sort of thing so that we were still a community even though we were isolating at home. It's a very emotional song and um, I hope I do it justice for the memory of your father and thank you for your lovely email. The tears have all been shed now We've said our last goodbye his soul's been blessed and he's laid to rest and it's now I feel alone. I go to my old school, Wellacre Academy, and um, I do that, like uh, they have a co-community day. So I go in and I give um, singing and uh, drama lessons just for one day uh, to try and encourage the kids to get involved in that. So I'm, I've been invited in to show them the medal and talk to the, because they have the BCA, the British Citizen Award, as a youth section as well so I'm trying to encourage the young people to nominate other young people who are doing good things in the community and try and encourage them to do community work uh, and they, they too could have a, an experience like Val and I had in London. You can find me on my website all the information's on there it's waynedevlin.com and everything's on there everything you need. Oh Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so Congratulations Wayne, we're all really proud of you for all the great fundraising work you have done for some great charities down the years. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week, just to remind you that we're going to be broadcasting on a brand new channel on August the 25th, we're moving to Sky Channel 186. Our broadcast times will remain the same. Henry McGlade is back with us next week with his show from County Mayo and we'll be here at 7.30. Until then, thank you all so much for watching.